Welcome to Lesson 8F, Pipe Flow Minor Losses. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to account for minor losses. I'll show two different methods. We'll show how to incorporate these into the head form of the energy equation. I'll show some values for various kinds of minor losses. And we'll do two example problems. First, a review of major and minor losses and the energy equation. What we called our workhorse equation is here, the head form of the energy equation from inlet 1 to outlet 2 where HL total is the sum of all major losses plus the sum of all minor losses. We know how to deal with major losses using this equation, where F is a function of Reynolds number and relative roughness. And we get F from the Churchill equation. From now on, I'm going to drop this negative sign in parameter A, since this exponent 16 is even, and the negative sign doesn't make any difference. This is how the Churchill equation appears with the negative sign, in all the publications I've seen, but it's not necessary. This was pointed out to me by my good friend, Dr. John Torzynski. Now let's consider minor losses, which are components other than fully developed sections of pipe. There are two ways to consider minor losses. The first one is equivalent length. We express the minor loss as F times L equivalent over D times V squared over 2G. Notice that this is the same form as the major losses, except we're using some equivalent length. Here's how it works. Suppose the actual pipe flow has a minor loss such as a valve. The equivalent case is a longer pipe such that the loss across the valve is equivalent to the loss through this long pipe using this equation. We basically pretend that we have a longer pipe in place of the valve. In other words, the total head loss is the same in both of these cases. This is nice and simple, but it's not the most popular way to analyze minor losses. The more popular way is with the minor loss coefficient. We define HL minor as some coefficient KL times V squared over 2G, where KL is the minor loss coefficient, which some authors call the resistance coefficient. The dimensions of KL are 1, it's dimensionless, and it's unitless. I do some research in the HVAC industry where they use C0 instead of KL, but they mean the same thing. I won't use this notation as resistance coefficient, but there is an analogy. Consider an electric circuit with resistor R, current I, and voltages E1 and E2. When you go across a resistor, the voltage drops using Ohm's law, but the current is constant. The analogy is with the pipe with some kind of a minor loss. Again, here's a valve. Resistance is analogous to the minor loss coefficient. Current is analogous to volume flow rate, and voltage also called electric potential is analogous to pressure. So here P1 is greater than P2, but volume flow rate remains constant. Regardless of which form of minor loss you use, the head form of the energy equation has the total irreversible head loss as the sum of major and minor losses. If there are several sections of pipe in series, we sum over all those sections, and we sum all the minor loss coefficients times Vj squared over 2g. Index I represents each pipe section, and J represents each minor loss component. In most cases, we'll deal with D as constant throughout. So this general equation reduces to this simpler form, where we combine the V squared over 2G terms, since when D is constant throughout, V is also constant throughout. So we have our major losses plus our minor losses. This is the form we'll most often use, although this more general form is necessary when you have pipe sections of varying diameter. Here are some sample values of minor loss coefficients from the Changal Simbala textbook, and there are other publications that give KL for various minor losses. Here we show three different types of pipe inlet. A re-entrant pipe inlet, where KL is about 0.8, a sharp-edged inlet, where KL is about 0.5, and a well-rounded inlet, where KL can be greatly reduced, depending on how much rounding. At outlets or exits, the fluid comes out with some kind of velocity profile, which becomes a jet. There are eddies that cause dissipation of the kinetic energy. It turns out that whether the pipe exit is re-entrant, sharp-edged, or rounded, we get the same kind of jet effect and dissipation. So KL is alpha, the kinetic energy correction factor, for all three of these cases. There are formulas here for sudden expansion, and sudden contraction, where KL varies from 0.5 to 0 for a contraction, when D over D goes from 0 to 1. Note that by convention, 
the larger speed, that associated with the smaller pipe section, is used in the equation for minor head loss. This V is the larger V of the two. So for the expansion, we use V1, and for the contraction, we use V2. I want to discuss a contraction a little more detail. We get recirculation eddies at these corners, and we get a stretched recirculation eddy just beyond the contraction. The streamlines converge and then diverge, and this high speed region with a low pressure is called a vena contracta. These eddies cause more dissipation and losses in the flow. There are many other loss coefficients in the tables for expansions, contractions, elbows, and T's. Note that for T's there are two values of KL, one for the branch flow and one for the line flow, where the part coming off is the branch and the part continuing straight on is the line. There are also KLs listed for various kinds of valves. I want to talk briefly about valves because I find that students are often confused. When you have flow through a valve, V1 is equal to V2, but P2 is less than P1, so the pressure drops. Here's where students get confused. Valves do not slow down the flow from 1 to 2. Rather, they create a head loss or a pressure drop that slows down the whole system. When you crank the valve partially closed, V1 is still the same as V2, but you cause a larger pressure drop and a slower flow rate overall. This is the exact opposite of pumps, by the way. For a pump, V1 is equal to V2, but P2 is greater than P1. So pumps do not speed up the flow from 1 to 2. The flow speed has to stay constant through here. Rather, they provide a head gain that speeds up the flow in the whole system. So in that sense, valves and pumps behave oppositely. If you replace this valve with the turbine, you have the same results, except you get some useful power out of it. I also want to talk about outlets, which is another point of confusion for many students. If we have a submerged outlet, as I said, the outlet forms a jet, and these eddies dissipate energy. In fact, all the kinetic energy of the jet eventually dissipates into heat. It is all wasted. How much of it is wasted? In our energy equation, recall that this is the kinetic energy term expressed as a head, and we have a kinetic energy correction factor, alpha. All of this energy is wasted, therefore KL is alpha at an outlet, as we saw in the tables. I give a caveat that this holds for submerged outlets, where the jet is included in the control volume. For example, if we have our control volume that goes just below the surface like we like to do, and this is our outlet, this entire jet is included in the control volume. So we include this KL equal alpha as one of our minor losses. So when we're summing up all the minor losses, we would include this one and set KL of the outlet to alpha. This is a case where we have a submerged outlet with the jet included in the control volume. What if we take that same outlet, but you decide to put your control volume through the outlet of the pipe? We still have the same jet with all the dissipation, but here the outlet is not counted as a minor loss since the jet is not included in the control volume. In other words, this is our outlet 2, and this is V2. So in this case, we do not include KL outlet. Well, then the alert student may ask, then wouldn't we get a different answer, including or not including the outlet as a minor loss? Well, actually, you get the same result, because in the energy equation in this case, the alpha 2 V2 squared over 2G term is not 0, whereas in this case, we have alpha V squared over 2G as a minor loss, but the V2 term in this part of the energy equation is zero since our outlet 2 is up here where V2 is approximately zero. So this term treated as a minor loss is the same as this term treated as the kinetic energy flow out of the control volume. The pressures also take care of themselves. Let me compare the two cases. Here P is atmospheric at this outlet, whereas if we use this control volume, P is atmospheric plus rho g times this height, and the pressure here is that hydrostatic pressure, but Z2 is that much lower, so you get the same result either way. The first control volume is a wiser choice. If you happen to have a pipe that exits into the atmosphere, say a water pipe exiting into P atmosphere, you would pick your control volume like this, 
and this speed would be V2, and there would be an alpha 2. And your control volume doesn't care what happens to this water outside the control volume. For this control volume, you would include this alpha 2 V2 squared over 2G term in the energy equation, but you would not have a minor loss at this outlet, since our control volume does not include any jet dissipation. So this kind of outlet is really the same thing as this kind of outlet. Now we're ready for some example problems. I'll do two. For this one we have water at 20 degrees flowing at some speed through a pipe of given diameter and length, and we have two elbows each with KL equal 0 0.90. We want to calculate the total irreversible head loss in meters and the pressure drop in KPA through this section of piping. There are both major and minor losses here. The first step is to draw a control volume, which I already did, slicing through 1 and 2. For the major losses, we'll need to calculate the Reynolds number, which is rho VD over mu. I get about 163,000, which is definitely turbulent. I use the Churchill equation at this RE, and epsilon is 0 since it's a smooth pipe. I get F equals 0 0.016176. Since this flow has only one pipe diameter throughout, we'll use the simpler form of our HL total equation, which is V squared over 2G times the quantity F L over D plus sigma KL. We have two elbows each with 0 0.90 KL, and those are the only two minor losses we have in this setup. So we can plug in the numbers V squared over 2G F L over D plus sigma KL. I get 18.083 meters. So the three digits HL total is 18.1 meters. The pressure drop due to irreversibilities, not counting elevation changes, these are accounted for in the energy equation. Here we just want the pressure drop due to these irreversibilities. So delta P irreversible losses is rho G times the total irreversible head loss. We plug in rho, G, and HL total and two unity conversion factors. I get 177 kPa. Let's do another example. This is exactly the same problem we had in the previous lesson, except in that case I gave the minor losses, where here we have to calculate them. All the given information is the same as previously, but I added this information. There are two elbows which are smooth and threaded, and the inlet and outlet are sharp. As we discussed, it doesn't matter that the outlet is sharp, but for the inlet it does make a difference in the KL. We want to calculate the electrical power in watts that must be delivered to the pump motor through the plug. I choose the same control volume as I did with the previous example, cutting through these two surfaces and through the electrical cord where electrical power is coming into our control volume. Here's our energy equation with the new notation. This is our new workhorse equation since we'll use this one for many problems that we solve. Because of our Y's control volume, these terms cancel as they did previously, and there's no turbine. So H pump U is just the elevation difference, plus the sum of all the major losses, plus the sum of all the minor losses. Here, sigma KL is 0 0.50 for the sharp inlet, plus 2 times 0 0.90 for the two elbows, plus 1.05, which is alpha at the outlet, and in this case, we must include that since this jet is dissipating inside the tank, which is included in our control volume. From our previous lesson, we had calculated Reynolds number, epsilon over D, and F from the Churchill equation. These are all the same as the previous lesson. By the way, sigma KL sums up to 3.35. To calculate W dot electric, we use the same equation as previously as well rho V dot G over eta pump motor times H pump U. We plug in this equation for H pump U, and we'll use our simpler equation for the sum of these two, which is HL total. So we get rho V dot G over eta pump motor times the quantity Z2 minus Z1 plus V squared over 2G, FL over D, the major loss, plus sigma KL, the minor loss. This is our answer in variables. I plugged in all the numbers as well as two unity conversion ratios. This is all nearly identical to the previous example, except we have sigma KL here in place of the given minor loss. I get 2.05 watts. Now we have all the tools that we need to solve complex pipe flow problems like this, including both major and minor losses, elevation changes, and pumps. We can do very similar problems with turbines.
Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.